Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbox here, and welcome to the first episode of the JVUX Medal Road to Glory Career Mode. This year, bringing it back in FIFA 14 with, of course, Bradford City. I am so pumped and so excited to be bringing it back to FIFA 14, especially now that it's on next gen. That is going to be so awesome. And yeah, I just cannot wait to get this underway, and hopefully you guys are just as excited. But before we do get underway with it, guys, I'm going to let you all know how this career mode series is a little bit different compared to any other career mode series I do on YouTube. For starters, we play every single competitive match within the season. So yes, every single game but friendlies, we are going to play. Why do we do that? I'm going to let you all know. It's because for every single game, we award votes to the three best players in the match on our team. We give votes out to players for the entire season, we then tally them up, and then whoever has the most votes at the end of the season wins, of course, the coveted j Bucks medal. We have a big award ceremony at the end of the season, we hand out, we go through the votes, we see who wins the j Bucks medal. We also give out a few other awards like best young player, best first team player, best transfer, and all that stuff. And as well as that, this series is pretty obvious, guys. We take the lower ranked teams in FIFA and we turn them into some of the biggest clubs in European football. That's what we strive to do with this career mode. We're gonna take little old Bradford City and we're gonna turn them into the next Bayern Munich Barcelona. But that's what's in store for you guys. I hope you enjoy the career mode because the road starts, ladies and gentlemen, right now. So welcome to this year's J Bucks Road to Glory career mode. I cannot wait to get this started with Bradford City, the first J Bucks Road to Glory career mode we're doing on next gen, currently current gen, whatever. But yes, we're getting underway. We do have a lot to get through before we of course advance on through and start the road to glory. But before we do that, we're gonna go through everything that we need to go through, all the preparation, all the planning that I'm about to go through for season one with Bradford City. First bit of business, we need to have a look at the team that we are working with right here, right now. And this is a team technically that I have already made changes to. I've actually recalled one player back from alone, and that player is actually Jason Kennedy. But let's go with the starting 11. I'm gonna stick with their default formation, which is a very simple 4-4-2. I will change it later on if need be. But the goalkeeper is, of course, McLaughlin, and I'm not gonna really be looking at their stats in too much depth. We're gonna be looking at age more specifically, because, of course, age is a big thing here. Potential, growth, that's really what you need to be successful in this type of career mode. We've got Stephen Darby, 24 years of age and 64 rated. Again, he looks all right. We probably won't be in a rush to replace him. I might be looking to get a new centre-back pretty soon, but we've got Matthew Bates, 26 years of age. He'll probably stop growing in a few years. And we've got Rory McArdle, who also is 26 at 62 rated. We have an Australian, James Meredith, 61 rated and 25 years of age. Again, not very high overall, getting there sort of in terms of about to stop growing. So we might look for potentially a replacement left back. You never know. But uh, anyway, let's move on to Yates. And again, 28 years of age, getting old. We've got Doyle as well, 26 at 64 rating as well. Kennedy, again, the player that I just got back only because we have so many loaned in players into this team right now, and I'll go through them in a second. But yeah, I decided to bring in Jason Kennedy because on top of having some, you know, pretty overall, overall you know, well-rounded stats for a player of his caliber, I do actually appreciate that. We have Kyle Reid, who is the fastest player that is actually a Bradford City player, and not loaned in, that is. And yes, he's 62 rated at 25 years of age, so he'll probably be getting a fair few games. We've got, of course, McLean, Aaron McLean, 30 years of age. So we'll probably be looking for a new striker. I definitely want to get a new striker for sure. And the other player is, of course, James Hansen, who I'm sure you saw a lot of in that uh, package for the, but, you know, for the announcement of the uh, Bradford City career mode. But yes, uh, not a lot of pace to him. He's got some great stamina and strength and all that stuff. And you know, maybe some of his stats aren't fantastic. Like, got great heading, obviously, and his finishing surprisingly is not that great. But yes, that is my starting eleven lineup. In order of, you know, you know, positions that I probably want to replace, I'm definitely looking at getting a new striker, maybe getting a new winger and a new left back in, potentially replacing the goalkeeper. Now for the substitutes, we've got Drury, 34 years of age. Again, he's out the door, so I'll probably be looking to offload him maybe. We've got Carl McHugh, who's only 20 years of age and at 56, yeah, he doesn't really have too high a potential though, but I would still like to give him games and grow him. We've got Bennett, who is an absolute ripper of a player for someone in this sort of team, but he is a loaned player, so we're going to lose him at the end of the season. And I'm not personally a very big fan of giving games to players that I technically don't even own and are just going to fuck off back to their clubs at the end of the season. We've got Gary Jones, who is 36 years of age, and I'll be very surprised if he just does not retire at the end of this season, but whatever. We've got De Vita as well, the Italian, 25 years of age, and we do own him as well. We've got Steed, who we don't own, 30 years of age, probably won't give too many games to. And then after that, most of the players aren't too fantastic. We've got Oliver McBurney, 17 years of age, 53 rating. And then, of course, moving on to reserves, 
We've got goalkeepers, Jamison, we don't even own. Barker, Bentley, and they're all very low, very low, low, low rating with not great potentials. We've got Taylor, centre-back, and Davies. So they're older centre-backs that are still quality. We might give them a few games. Good replacement. We've got Gary Thompson as well, 32 years of age. Again, out the way on the door. Uh, Reach, who was a loaned-in player, 20 years of age. If I, For a second, I thought he was actually a uh, Bradford City player. I would absolutely have been giving him plenty of games, but no. Atkinson, again, is also loaned in. And as is Doolan, this is how many loan players we have. Seriously, as soon as we lose the five, six-something players that we have that have been loaned in from other clubs, we are only going to have like six players in our reserve. So we definitely need to try to sign a fair few people. We've got Andy Gray, who is 35 years of age. And yeah, I don't really see him getting a game with 27 pace. I'm very sorry, but it's just not going to happen. But that is the team, ladies and gentlemen, that we are going to be starting with the Bradford City Road to Glory career mode for Season 1. So I'm definitely going to be looking at making some signings right now in this transfer window. And I'm probably going to be... I'm betting that the majority of them are going to end up being free agents because when you have the limited resources that we do have, and I'm about to show them to you right now, we have just under $1 million and just under 2500 left on the weekly wage budget. And that's actually money spent because I had to free up Jason Kennedy from his loan. I didn't want to wait. So I spent 28 grand to get Jason Kennedy back. And then of course his wages. So we had to fill that as well. But yes, that's um, not a lot of money. So I'm going to probably be taking all that transfer budget, turning into weekly wage, and just playing the contracts game in terms of transfers because that is really the best way to do it in terms of being able to pick up still plenty of quality players without having to spend too much money. As a matter of fact, I, in my first season, am going to do my absolute best not to give a single cent of mine to another club. I don't want it to happen. So before we advance on through and we get it going, I'm going to have a look right now at some free agents. We're probably going to get into the Global Transfer Network as well because, guys, I know that a lot of people out there would probably just go on a SoFIFA or Foothead or whatever and look up who are the best players in career mode, but no, not me. I'm going to go purely off of the Global Transfer Network and do it how at least EA Sports wanted us to do it. I'm going to actually go use scouts and whatever players they send to me, whatever players I get, they're the players I'm going to go with. It's going to be a pure career mode. But because we know just how useful free agents can be for a club in our position, we are definitely going to be looking at signing a few free agents in the first season. So I'm going to set the max to 25 years of age. I don't want to sign anyone older than that because they're probably not going to grow. And I still want to buy players that are quality, but still have potential. So we're going to find plenty of really good players in here that are around our teams overall. And then we're going to find absolute standouts like guys like Bruma that we're just absolutely no way are we going to be able to afford players like that with the wage that we have. So you don't have to worry about me signing ridiculous, almost 80 rated players for a League One team because I just won't be able to afford them, pure and simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a couple of you know free agents that have caught my eye. I'm going to add them to my shortlist. I'm going to scout them. We're going to see what their stats are more in depth. And then I'm going to make an, um, then I'm going to make a judgment whether or not I want to purchase them or not. Okay, so I've gone through all the free agents. I've seen ones that I think are good, affordable, look like they have some pretty good potential. And the great thing about free agents is you don't really need to scout them because you don't need to know what their value is or what their wage is because it'll tell you straight away what their wage is. And then you've got all their stats presented pretty much pretty accurately within about 10 of their specific stat numbers. So yeah, uh, we've got plenty of really good players. We're going to go through them now. So starting it off, we've got two right backs. We've got Camdow, a Turkish right back who's very, very quick from the looks of things. And then we also have Ryan McGowan, who is an Australian. So two pretty quality right backs I might be interested in picking up. And uh, McGowan looks like he's pretty well rounded as a right back. But this is the thing, guys. I went through and I changed my budget and it, I pretty much allocated it all to my uh, just wage and not to actual transfer money. But um, this is the thing. I only have $20,000 worth of remaining wage to actually spend on players. So this is the thing. I'm really going to have to try hard to not spend too much on specific players. So that way we can pick up plenty. Because we look at, for example, the uh, wage of Ryan McGowan. He's only 9000 so that would be just under half of my remaining wage just gone out the window. Two left backs now. We've got DeGrodge, who's got some okay pace and some agility there, so he looks like a pretty good, pretty solid uh, winger. And then he's got one stat that I absolutely love, and that's his five-star skill moves. And, you know, I just love to have a player in my team that had five-star skill moves, just break him out if I felt like it. And he's pretty young as well at 17, so that's not bad. Some not great work rates there, I just saw, so that's uh, unfortunate, but... Uh, yeah, and the other one is... Uh, okay, now the other left mid in here is Ampuero, or I'm probably going to get that wrong. But anyway, 
He, again, looks pretty well-rounded as well, and uh, I don't expect him to be too highly rated, but he does have some pretty nice, decent stats in there. Two center attacking midfielders now. We've got Morozo, who looks pretty good. He's got some nice stats in his uh, physical and some pretty well-rounded technical stats as well. And then we've got Chip, uh, Chip Chiu or whatever. Chip Chiu, I don't know, but 24 years of age, a little older than some of the other free agents. But you look at some of those stats, and they just look absolutely terrific. And the last two players, the striker, Adam Jiracuso. I probably got that wrong. I apologize. But yeah, he looks like a very nice striker as well, 22 years of age. Looks like he could grow. He'd probably be a pretty high overall, maybe like high 60s, I would imagine. And then we've got Paolo Hurtado, or Hurtado, Hurtado, Hurtado. I'm not sure, but we'll get it right someday, hopefully, if I sign him. But yeah, I don't think I'll be able to sign him because he's got some amazing stats, I'm only realizing now. And let's have a look at how much he actually costs to sign wage. Okay, I don't even have enough to sign that one player. So yeah, I think he's out of the question. But now the question needs to be asked, which players am I going to sign? I'm going to give it a thought and I'll come back to you. I've decided the two main players I'm going to go for are Morozo and Jeruk. So I'm definitely getting that name wrong, but I apologize. Yeah, they're the two main players that I'd really like to get. That's 10,000 and 10,000 immediately. So that's pretty much all the wage gone. But they're two quality players that I think would really make an improvement to the team. And if possible, if we have enough, if we do have enough, uh, uh, enough money left and I would like to get this player as well one of the two left backs and I'm thinking for right backs I think I'm I think I'm gonna be okay with Derby for now so I'm gonna do some pretty dodgy stuff here I'm gonna offer like a little less than what they're worth and add the 20% because of course we all know the 20% does absolutely nothing and hopefully it might be able to save us a thousand coin or so that hopefully might be able to give us enough cash to buy one more play through free agency. And the same goes for Jeruk. So again, 20%, nine grand. We're saving that 1,000. That hopefully will be enough for us to sign that other left mid. So this is it. We're finally going to advance on through. It took me a while just to get through the first day, but we're done. We've done what we need to have done and accepted for that one. So we've got Jeruk... Uh Bloody hell, I need to say, I'm going to get these names down, guys. Don't worry. Morozo has declined. Jerukso, again, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. But yeah, he's accepted as well, so that's good. And uh, Ampuera has hit me with a counter offer. He wants 4,000, which I would have given him anyway, plus the 20,000. I'm going to say we'd probably stick with the four. But yeah, okay, it's good to see that he's accepted nine. And Morozo, I think we'll still be able to accept the 9,000 and the 20%. Because he just wants to know his role, which is good. Morozo wants a squad role. I'm going to give him squad rotation to start off with. I'll be surprised if he accepts it for a team like ours. But yes, hopefully he does. Because the lower squad role he has, the less expectation he has of playing, the less likelihood he's going to come and bitch to you about, oh, I'm not playing enough games. In the meantime, Adam Jerukso says that yes, he's keen. And we are about to make our first signing of the Bradford City career mode. Welcome to the team, our first signing. And have a look at that. We've only signed one player, and yet our team rating has still gone up by half a star. That's fantastic. Let's see what rating he is. He is 68, so he probably immediately becomes the highest rated player in our team. So I am definitely making Adam Jeruk, so we're starting 11 striker, but I have to take one out. Who is Adam Jeruk, so going to be, uh, of course, playing alongside in the starting 11? I'm probably going to make it Hanson, only because he is younger. He may not have, you know, he may have slightly worse stats as compared to McLean, but... Uh, Hansen is 25 years of age and have a look at this like he's 30 so he can definitely get to this guy's level in a hell of a lot less time and he'll be younger and he'll probably get better as well so it's only a logical choice but it's going to be Jerukso and Hansen up forward for the time being so the first change to our starting 11 the first signing and how about this Morozo has still declined he wants a bigger role that's probably understandable so we gave him a squad rotation I believe and now we're going to make him an important first team player hopefully he'll be accept hopefully he'll accept that I don't see him saying no to that, but yeah, let's see. Morozo has declined. He wants to be a crucial first team player. Wow, that actually took me by surprise, but hopefully that means he's an absolute kind of a player. If he isn't, if he isn't like near 70 rating, I'll be very annoyed. But anyway, yes, still 9,000. That's only what I'm going to pay for him for four years. And fuck it. Yeah, he's a crucial first team player. If he... He can't say no to this. He actually can't. It's the highest squad role. Come on. And yes, he finally accepts. Of course he would on the absolute highest squad role that I could possibly give a player with Crucial. So yes, we've made our second signing. We've only got 2,000 remaining wage budget, so we can't sign. Uh, so that doesn't mean that we can sign Ampuro, which is a little bit disappointing. But hopefully, maybe we'll find the funds somewhere else. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll sell one of the older players. I'm not too sure. So it turns out Morozo is also a 68 rated player, so that's not too bad. It turns out he isn't as quick as what I first thought he was. But anyway, technical attributes look pretty good for, again, a player of his rating. And uh, he's got some nice uh, sort of passing stats, some nice ball control and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, he's a midget, but <laughs> that's to be expected because a lot of the players we're going to be getting are quite young. So I've added Morozo into the starting 11. I've actually changed the formation. I've created a custom one where I've actually gone... With a 4-4-2 formation, so we still have four defenders and two strikers, but now we've got a right mid, a center mid, a left mid, 
and a center attack midfielder. So we're going to be stretched defensively when it comes to our midfield, but at least we've got plenty of width in there, and we've got that uh, center attack midfielder spot for Morozo to slide into nicely. I have Morozo set as the captain at the moment, but I'm probably not going to keep him captain. I would like to give it to a player that's actually been at Bradford for a while, one that's been there, it's experienced. And yes, I know that uh, Gary Jones is the current captain, but he's not going to be getting a lot of starting 11 action in this team, I don't think. So I would like for you guys maybe to actually tell me who do you think should be captain of Bradford City? Put it in the comment section below. I'm sure a few of you watching are pretty big uh, Bradford City fans, hopefully. So um, yeah, tell me who in this starting 11 team that you can see right here deserves to be captain. Let me know. Comment section below. So we're advancing on through. We've got the first friendly now against Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, to be honest, guys, yes, I am going to be playing every single game of this career mode, but friendlies, because really, they're sort of irrelevant, don't really mean too much in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to simulate really every single friendly. The first game that we're going to be playing is like an actual competitive game, and that's what we're going to be giving votes to. So we're simulating the first game. That's a fucking great start. But anyway, it's to be expected. I am actually expecting a loss because Brighton and Hobie Albion... Oh, Reed! Well, there he goes. He gets the equalizer. Good on you. But yeah, Brighton and Hobie Albion are, of course, a... Oh, oh, oh my God, Rory McCarter just scored a goal. Please, this would be another upset because Brighton and Hobie Albion are in the league above us, so that would be insane. This would be Derby sent off. This is not good. I'm weak at the back. This ain't great. We're running out of time. Oh, it's a victory. You're kidding me. We beat Brighton and Hove Albion. Fantastic. A team that is higher rated than us and in a higher league than us. And we beat them 2-1. That's a fantastic result. So I've just got an email. Youth Squad Monthly Report. I have not sent anybody away to my knowledge. And yet I've already got a player saying I should have a look at Carlos Pinto or something like that. Which is interesting because I've not sent anybody away. League objective, they want me to fight for a promotion. I think that's understandable. That's definitely what we want to get into the next uh, tier. And the scout has returned as well, which is really interesting because I didn't know that I had a scout. I seriously didn't. So maybe this is something that you get with lower ranked teams. I'm really not sure. I, this has not happened to me in career mode before. All right, guys, this is pretty interesting. Carlos Pinto, 16 years of age, potential of 82 to 94. And guys, I think I know what this is. Okay, no, I had someone send me a... And this is kind of interesting because if this has happened, I did not intend for it to happen. But if this has happened, then this is going to actually change the career mode massively. But okay, I had someone, I don't even know who, somebody in my friends list, and again, it doesn't tell you, so I have no idea who. Someone sent me a scout future star that's like 50 rated or something like that, maybe 45 or something. And obviously, I wouldn't be able to buy it because I'm only 7 rated on this account that I'm doing it with. So I had a look at it. I didn't know that I could redeem it. And I didn't think that I did redeem it. But I've got this player now, which is scary because I actually got something else from the same person. I got, at the same time, it is the smallest one that you can get, but I actually got a financial takeover. Now this, if it's happened, I don't know if it has happened. It might just be this player. But if it has happened, this will be... This will shake up the entire career mode. In the meantime, Carlos Pinto, we have got an amazing player. Will I be able to sign him? Yes, I will. Five years, 500,000. I don't see that happening, but yeah, I want him. This is a this will be a great pickup straight away. All right, moment of truth. Do we have a bunch of... No, we don't. Okay, finances have stayed the same. We've still got a, we've still got a player, but the finances have not changed. So the financial takeover has not happened. Simulating the second friendly here, I believe against this Brazilian team, we've conceded. I'm just going to skip it. Oh, we lost 3-0. That's not a great... Hey, we flew all the way to fucking Brazil to play that game. I don't care. Advancing on through to the last friendly of the game. Do we get any more? Carlos Pinto has said yes to 500 bucks a week when he's probably going to turn into potentially the next Messi. But let's check him out. This player is probably immediately going to become our best, highest rated player. And he is... Six oh, he's... Wait, no, he's only 63 rated. Oh, okay. So he's not that bad. But oh, I thought he'd be a lot better, to be honest. But okay, we've got a 63 rated player with some incredible potential. And to be honest, he actually is not that great to start off with. I know he's got a high potential, but he does not look that fantastic. So there you go. As we're about to simulate the final friendly and we'll move on to our first competitive game. But yeah, we've saw, we've made three transfers so far and we win this one as well. That's terrific. We've got Morozo, Jeruxo, and now we've got Pinto as well. What is it with players' last names at NNO? I'm not sure. But yeah, I honestly did not think... I didn't know that I redeemed anything. So apparently I just got a free player for nothing really. But that's that's good. He's, still, he's not too overpowered straight away, but hopefully he'll turn into a beast. But now we have the first game of Football League 1, the first competitive game, the first game that we'll be giving votes out for the j Bucks medal for. This will be intense. I cannot wait for it to happen, but guys, it's going to be the next episode. And isn't this fucking convenient? This is probably what I get for holding out on the first game of the season for you guys. But yes, I already lost a player for, for almost oh, for more than a month, and it's only one of my better players in Kyle Reid who is, I believe, a left mid. Yep, so he's out. Does that mean... No, Pinto's a right mid. Can he play? 
as a left. No, he can't. He's just a right midfielder. Okay, I'm going to have to replace him. I'm probably going to have to replace him with Bennett, who is a lone player, but he does look fantastic. So we are done with the first episode of the J-Bucks medal, Road to Glory career mode with Bradford City. I am so pumped and so happy that I finally got this series underway. This is by far my personal favorite series out of everything that I do on YouTube. Hopefully it'll be yours too. And we're going to have a hell of a time. The road has officially started. Let's see where it takes us. Hopefully to the top tier of European football and some great accolades hopefully wait along the track. But yes, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. And yeah, don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe and to follow me on Twitter. Let me all know as well what you think of the series, any improvements, any plays you want me to sign. Let me know in the comment section below. But this is it for me. Thank you for watching. I'm yours, Game of the Master Box, and peace out. Bye-bye.